Okay, hey, what's up, folks? This is the US Chess School. So I just got um, them started. What we're doing is they're playing out this end game uh, position. Uh, actually have a couple games going here. And they're all playing out from the same position. So the starting position was, was this one. <laughs> they're going to make moves. But this is the starting position. So they're all playing it out. The time control for each of these games is 3 minutes and 10 seconds. And so these are the kids in the US chess school. So this is like a little training session we've set up, kind of like a private arena. Um, we're just going to see how they play out this end game and what ends up happening here. It's kind of like instructive bishop versus knight end game. Uh, the arena will last for about half an hour. They'll probably play at least one, hopefully two or three games each, um, depending on how much time it takes. And yeah, we'll kind of see, uh, see if we can find anything instructive in the encounters. So yeah, pretty cool. Kind of a different change of pace from these, like uh, the way we normally do these classes. Let me make sure everyone is in. I think. I know we have ten players. I feel like we might be missing someone, but I'm not really sure. They're struggling. Anyway, we got a bunch of games going on here. Actually, Greg is playing. Um, he's here, so <laughs> he's playing. I guess the highest rated student, Eric. Um, let's see how their game went. So Greg started with f4. Interesting. King e7. Black goes a5. And uh, yeah, actually, I'd be curious what you guys think in the chat about the evaluation of this position. And then I'll tell you guys kind of what, what I think. Yeah, just a bit of nice end game training. So I'm not sure about this move a5 because this one is kind of committal. Um, Black could have also put this pawn on a6 to cover the b5 square or just left it on a7. Um, but I guess he wants to kind of carve out uh, this square for his king so he can get like king c5, king b4. Um, but Greg remaining, remaining solid. Um, well, I'm going to try to just keep the discussion on the end games for now. Um, but I'm happy to answer other questions later on. Okay, so we have black is better, uh, post things white as an advantage here. Um, cool, cool. Let's see, we also have... Two players here, 2200 versus 2360. These are their blitz ratings, so I wouldn't pay too much attention to this because this is not really like a blitz time control. This is like 3 plus 10. And what this is supposed to do is kind of mimic a tournament situation where, you know, your time is running low, but you still have this increment to rely on. Now, in over the board tournaments, you actually get 30 seconds per move. So you actually get quite a bit of time every move to actually think about stuff. Here, it's going to be a little bit faster with a 10 second increment, but we have to find some balance, right? Because we, we didn't want these games, or I didn't want these games to, to take forever. Okay, interesting. So let's see what happened in this game. So in this game, white started with king f1, brought the king out first, king d5, knight e2, king c5, knight d4, king b4, king d2, a5, f4, h6, g4, g5. Okay, now white is taking king d3. Okay, Michiko likes white. Metabolic error says draw. Okay, guys, so I'll tell you. Oh, wow, the one game already finished? Oh, looks like Greg and Eric agreed to a draw. Interesting. They repeated moves there with the king. And then this game between Cole and ALG also ended in some kind of repetition. So, so far, two draws. So far, two draws. I 
and this game, yeah, they also repeat in moves here. So I'll tell you guys my opinion of the position. So the starting position uh, of this this end game is here, and I would say that. <laughs> Greg said he didn't make the first move fast enough and lost by forfeit. Um, so I would say that black is actually slightly better in this end game because um, uh, the bishop is just a little bit stronger than uh, the knight here. And can kind of play on both sides of the board. Okay, a few more games still going here. So this was the G5 game. Bishop E6, wow, giving white the chance to take and go into king and pawn end game, which um, looks, uh, looks like white is going for it. But that looks very tricky because that just seems like black is promoting uh, first here. Hmm. I wonder why white did that, because white could have still played king c2 and just defended the pawn. And uh, black has pressure, maybe bishop d5 and comes down here, but... Hmm. Seems like this is uh, just losing directly for white, so maybe not a good decision there. Time trouble. So the reason the bishop is, is better in this endgame is because... Basically, it can affect both sides of the board. The bishop can like both defend against a potential pass pawn for white and put pressure on the king side, whereas the knight can either support the queen side or it can do stuff on the king side, but he can't really do stuff on both sides of the board. Um, bishop takes b3 and a4, probably too slow. Knight will have like knight c1 square usually, or even knight a1. Um, according to the engine, it is slightly better for black. Yeah, so the engine backs it up, guys. I'm sorry. Um, well, actually, it's white to play. So white's king is definitely in time. But yeah, it's really the bishop that gives black kind of the, the advantage here. OK, h4 takes g5. Oh, so this was white's idea to, to try to break. Um, and the king stops the pawn. but. Um, I think black is going to be winning this one because of the, the pawn race, like the two pawns. We'll see, actually. No, I'm, you know, my, white might be in time here to um, make a queen, actually. This might have been, like, really well played, actually. Because now white is promoting first. So black will get a queen but uh, and have an extra pawn. But at least white is very much in the game. Black lost the tempo with eight. How so? I don't understand that. Because white also played king f3. Could have done this one, but white is um, promoting first, then black promotes, and then white would be able to take a pawn with check and, and probably hold. So I don't know, I think black might have had to try this one. So now check and, okay, this is the position on the board. So this is gonna be long queen end game. Uh, objectively it's probably drawn, but it's difficult for the defender here. Although white's king is actually I think in good position. So when the king is close, then it's kind of easy to trade queens and make a draw. So probably a draw here, but we'll see what happens. Looks like white actually won a game here, so that's that's a little bit surprising, but not totally unexpected because we are dealing with the knight here, and it is a blitz situation, so you could make the argument that the knight is a very tricky piece in blitz. So let's see what happened here. White advanced, f4, f3, 
Knight c3 check, king e5, g4, h5, takes, takes, h4. So yeah, h4 was important move here from white, of course, not to lose the pawn too quickly. So now knight b5. Okay, here black could have taken. King takes, gone for king g4, king a6, and then it's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six moves. One, two, three, four, five. Hmm. So black could have done that, and they would have promoted at the same time. Um, but goes for this one, so keeps the bishop, takes b5 here, king d4. Oh, wow. The bishop isn't able to to stop the pawn. Oh no, so bishop f5, this was black trying to get some time to cover the b7, like black wants to sack the bishop on b7 and in the meantime go king h3, king g2, but after very strong move king d4, the bishop is just caught because the knight is covering all these squares. So bishop d7, b6, and the bishop isn't able to sack for the pawn anymore. So black should have taken this one here. And then the evaluation of this one, I'm not sure about because black's king is coming to g2 and the pawn is running. So it's a lot of counterplay. Honestly, it's really hard to, really hard to judge. Uh, engine says white is winning. Just want to check this one. So here, here, h4, uh, knight d4 and just takes. And black is lost. Yeah, nothing to do. White just is going to sack for the pawn and then run with the F pawn. So this one. Yeah, black was basically in big trouble here. Only defense was this miracle move bishop h3, b6, check, and then bishop a6. And then black is able to just always sack for the pawn and then the king has enough time here, but that's that's very difficult to see. Bishop here, here, and like a billiard ball. Yeah, but I think black definitely could have taken this one. So this was the way to go. This king and pawn end game. Um, oh yeah, can also go king h3 here. Go for this one. And let's see what would have happened here. Well, queen end game. Yeah, some winning chances, but objectively drawn. Okay, let's keep looking. Oh, this is the queen end game that's still going on. Let's see, we should have more games. Okay, this is Greg's game, and let me just open up these games so we have them. got a late join so I just got to set them up here okay let me see if anyone's waiting all right okay so here we have Eric against excellent king let's see what happened here so white brought the king out b4 king d3 Knight b3 allowing a check and bishop f1. Knight c5. So black won a pawn here. But white ended up getting check and knight g5. So white ends up getting the pawn back. And it looks like the players repeated a bit. And the game continues. Interesting.
but yeah, it does look about equal at this point. Oh, uh-oh. Black hangs the pawn. Bishop c4, knight takes a6. Now can't take, that's just a losing endgame. Have to keep your bishop. Bishop a2. It's still not easy for white actually because the pawn is still hanging. So maybe white is fine, but, um, or I mean, not winning yet, but white is going to be closer here to the uh, the king side. So this is actually going to be kind of tricky for black. And I don't know, I think white has good winning chances here because the king can just run to f6 and go after these pawns. So this will be tough for black to defend. Yeah, looking good for white, for sure. Okay, let's see here. Five here. H4. Knight of seven, check. And so what happened in this one? So B4 was played. King here, king D6, king D3. Bishop a4, knight f5, king d4. Seems like white is slowly outplaying this one. Yeah, it feels like black got all the pawns on kind of the wrong color here. Um, the queen and pawn endgame. Looks like that one was drawn. So white, yeah, white kept the king in front of the pawn, which I think is good defense here. And now white can just trade queens and get easy draw. So I think this was very well played by white. Really well defended that those positions aren't easy to hold. Okay, we had this one. So this one actually still not clear because black has done the right thing and got the king super active. Yeah, so this is still actually not easy at all for white. In fact, objectively black might be okay here. Takes, takes, take here. Yeah, it looks like black is actually holding this one. In fact, white might even need to be careful. Yeah, I don't know. I think um, the king was running very quickly. So yeah, not sure if I was totally winning there, but definitely there was some chances. Okay. Oh, it looks like black won this one. Okay, let's see what happened here. I think this is the first black one we've seen. Wow, this was long game. So let's see what happened here. King f1, so bringing the king to the center again. King e5. Okay, black repeats, a5. Mm-hmm. Knight keeps hopping around, hopping around. Oh, and white allows this exchange where black's king becomes active. So white ends up maybe blundering here. Knight c2, black goes bishop f5 and just takes. King e4, now black's king just immediately comes in. White could have done this one and defended like this, but this rarely holds because black's king is so active. Um, so for example, there's this plan, and then playing like f6, and white is super passive, and black can, I think, just go uh, g5 here. Actually, f5, f4 might even be easier. And either white has to lose the pawn, or takes, king takes, and then white is losing this one. So very, very active king. Kind of decides this one. So instead white goes this way, but then we get this uh, queen and pawn end game where black ends up with two extra pawns and yeah, pretty much just very difficult. Sometimes white can actually like draw this one with objectively best play, but I think in practice it's pretty much impossible. Yeah, so that was GG. Now here and the king is in a bad spot. 
Okay, this game is still being played. Greg trying to convert this one with the knight versus the bishop. And let me see. Right, having a king on the sixth rank is, yeah, often very strong. Greg is going active, a6, king d6. And we see kind of the, the power of the active king. Now black's king just doesn't have a lot of space, has to move away. Uh, but still white has to be careful. But we'll see how he plays this one out. In the meantime, let's see if we have more games. Just trying to open up as many games as I can because once they finish, they're hard to find. Okay, let's see how... Oh, well, it looks like Urk just won this one. Let's see what happened here. Oh, a5. Oh, this is interesting. Look, Eric had this, I think he had this twice. I, I'm not sure, I think it's the same player. He had this twice. He allowed black to win this pawn because he wanted to go knight c5. And then, um, but it's, <laughs> yeah, it doesn't work. a5 just kind of kills the idea. And now black's king just immediately comes in. So this was just, um, yeah, total refutation. That's kind of funny. And then actually had to be careful here, but oh, that's nice. Oh, that's a beautiful domination. Look at that. Knight can't move and king can't approach the bishop. So literally nothing, <laughs> nothing white can do. Black is just running the g-pawn. That is a really nice final position. Okay, let's see. So what did Greg took here? King takes. King takes is interesting because this lets Black's king get a little bit more active. So White tries to keep control. Bishop d3. It feels like White is slightly better, but always have to be very careful not to allow the king to come in. So knight e3 covers this one and keeps this one under control. Now maybe Black should play for h5, h4, or possibly just sit like bishop e4. Probably time for white to go f4, yeah, and kick black's king. So this is a nice like way of playing against the king. And now is getting vibes of like Karpov Kasparov. You guys remember that famous game that Karpov won against Kasparov? He like sacked a pawn, he got his knight in through h4. It was very, very nice. Yeah, looks like Greg wins that one. That was a nice, nice clean win. Let's see here, baby dragon king against CMS 13. So B4. Um, Bishop C8. G5. G5 I really like from black. I think that's an excellent move because that stops white from being able to push h4 and it stops white from being able to push g3. So this one move like freezes white's king side and now it gives black ideas of going bishop a6, bishop f1. So white goes knight b5, provokes a6. Okay, now black keeps pushing h6. So pawns on the dark squares. And here we go, bishop comes to b5 and now aiming for this one. So knight d3, h5, 
And it's kind of a difficult position for white, because if the king moves, black's king is coming in. You don't really want to play f3 here. Um, then black maybe even goes h4, and, and then all the pawns are just stuck. So bishop f1, knight f3, takes, knight takes g5, h4. And yeah, black is, black is very close here, I think. But knight f3 hits this one. Uh, so white is still still fighting. Now he could maybe take and go king e5, actually. That was interesting. Take, take, king e5. Oh no, then white comes in this way. Yeah, so that's, that would be no good, I think. Probably not good. Okay, let's get back to the game. Where's the game? Where's the game? There we go. So takes, knight h4, king e4. Knight g6, bishop g4. So reduced material, it's going to be hard for black to convert this one, but I would probably still take black here. Okay, king c3. Now actually... Feels like white is fine. White has this nice like blockade on the dark squares. Right, and actually that's a good point. Wrong bishop. So at any point, if white wants to secure a draw, can just take, and white should be totally fine. You know. So at this point, what is safe to kind of play for the win, but you always have to be careful because one day you might might not have the chance anymore. Okay, one minute left in the arena, so actually these games are going to be getting ended soon. This time Eric giving up this pawn. But yeah, black can go h5, h4 here. This actually, I would I would think, can be very dangerous for white. So this kind of shows why the bishop is a much stronger piece than the knight in these kinds of positions, because the bishop can support the pawn and defend against this, um, this b pawn. Yeah, if black goes h5 here, it looks actually very, very strong. h5, good find, good. Yeah, now I actually think white has to be extremely careful here. Because king is not stopping the pawn anymore. Well, actually, wait. King can maybe get back in time. But the king would have to go right away. Okay, so that's the end of the arena. Let me get back to the Zoom class. Hello, hello. All right, let me wait for everyone to get back in. Let me know, guys, if you're back in the Zoom chat and you can actually hear me. And uh, yeah, we'll look at some of these, um, take a look at some of these games. <laughs> Okay guys, so it's going to be um, a little bit difficult for me to like find all the games, but um, first off, what I wanna do is just ask you guys, now that you've played the position out a couple of times, what, what is your evaluation? Okay, Radia says black is better. Royal says yeah. Radia says much better. Alex says black is better. Black, way better. Oh wow. Oh, so everyone likes black. Oh good. Okay, well, yeah, I, I would agree with you guys. I think in the starting position, uh, black is the one that should be playing for the win. Um, mainly because just the bishop is a stronger minor piece here, and you can kind of fight on both sides of, of the board. Uh, but of course, black didn't win every game, like white won <laughs> multiple games. I think that's more just due to the fact that we're playing kind of short time control, but that is how 
things now uh, stand in, in tournament chess, a lot of times you have to play out these end games when you're like on, you know, your 30 second increment. So it can actually be very tough to play the position out accurately, even even though you might think you're better, it's still very, very, very challenging, I would say, to actually convert it um, as black. So good job to those of you that did. I would say it's not easy to win this position um, at all. Uh, actually, maybe we could just analyze a bit. And if you guys have like an interesting variation from your game that you want to look at, just let me know in the chat. Um, but what do you guys think is best play from from both sides? What do you guys think should be white's first move here? Yeah, in general, actually, there was two camps that I saw in the training game. Some players played either f4 or b4 first. Some players played uh, king directly to d3. Yeah, so it's not totally clear. I'll tell you guys, the engine thinks that this position is about somewhere between point, point 0.5 and point 0.6 for black with, with best play. Um, but there are you know, multiple continuations. Um, so in the game white played king f1, I believe that this is kind of the best approach for, for white to try to hold it. Um, let me actually show you guys what happened in the game and then we can maybe compare. So king e2, king d6. Am I, am I supposed to be on a board somewhere? Oh, sorry, sorry. Let me, I need to share my screen again. My bad. <laughs> uh, thank you for mentioning. Uh, okay, guys, now you should be able to to see the screen. Actually, let me put this on the, let me get this on the analysis board. Okay. So in the game, white went for bringing the king uh, to d3, black played king to d5. And so I, I'm sure there were a few games that reached this position. Do you guys remember, what did you, what did you play here at this point? Okay, there's b4. Yeah, what else can white try? Of course, white can just sit with king e3. That's always an option if you uh, just want to do nothing and wait for black to, to come to you. Now, Austin's saying it's crucial to prevent g5. Yeah, and that's definitely something to think about as well. So you could go, yeah, f4 here would be um, another option. So in the game, white actually played h4 right at this moment. Uh, and I think this was, I think this was the best try because it, it actually is kind of important to stop g5. So let's say for example, um, white does something else like moving uh, the king, let's say king e3 here, and uh, black is able to play g5. The issue for white now is that it's hard for you to play g3 because uh, each three pawn will be hanging. And so it's hard for you to fig move anything on the king side. And so in the long run, black is always gonna have this idea of bringing the bishop back to f1. And okay, you can defend against this one, but it's something for white to always think about. So it's kind of like, you know, b3 pawn is one weakness. Now this is like a second weakness and slowly it gets harder and harder for white to defend here. I think I saw one game like this. Um, I think, I don't remember who it was exactly, but I, no, actually there were a few games where the bishop got to f1 and, and started uh, collecting the pawns. Um, now let's go back a little bit because black could have played g5 like back here, for example, if he wanted to play this move earlier. But I think the issue with this one is that I think white can even go like f4 here. And if white is able to just trade off these pawns very quickly, then of course that makes it harder for black to, to win the game. Uh, but once the kings are in the center, now it's kind of hard for white to achieve this f4. Let's say king e3, g5, like f4, not really like possible anymore. So that's why king has to be, that's why, yeah, I think, I think the right plan is to bring the king to the center first. Then once your king is kind of always threatening to invade this way, white's king has to keep Black's King out, then it's kind of if you have the time to fix uh, with g5. Um, what if King e3 instead of King d3? I think that's 
possible. So for me, the issue with king e3 is that now you're kind of further away um, from the, the b pawn. So I think the way why I would like to play it is to keep the king flexible. So if black's king is heading towards the queen side, you want to fight the king on the queen side. If the king is headed towards the king side, you want to fight the king on uh, the king side. Uh, is it actually dangerous to let black do that? Well, yeah, well, let's look at some like sample variations here. I did a little bit of analysis on this one, but let me show you guys some maybe instructive continuations. Um, let's see here. So for example, Uh, yeah, let me show you guys how the game continued here. So white played h4 uh, after king d5. Black played bishop c8. I saw a few of you make this move, so this is a useful move just because it gives the bishop a few more squares to work with. Uh, white played knight f3. Okay, there are definitely other options here. Uh, bishop a6. And here white chose king c3. Um, but of course, I was interested in what happens after king e3, and just like sample line for you guys to kind of help understand what happens here, like king c5, knight g5, king b4. And that's kind of a common theme in these end games at the side with the bishop. Typically, you're going to kind of welcome pawn races. I mean, pawn races are scary. It's always nerve wracking to allow your opponent like a lot of counterplay. But with the bishop, you generally want to kind of put faith that the fact that your bishop can do things on both sides of the board. You can defend against white's pass pawns. And of course, you can support your a pawn, whereas the knight, of course, cannot be on both sides of the board. Uh, so this would actually be, I think, quite good for black. Let's say, for example, knight f7, king takes b3, knight d6, let's say bishop f1, g4, e5. And the knight just has very difficult time um, dealing with the pawn. In fact, I think best chance already for white is to do something like knight b7 and give the knight for the pawn right away. Um, but not really enough time here. Black will be able to win this one um, just by getting the king back and keeping at least one pawn on uh, the king side. Um, so that's just kind of sample variation as how these things can sometimes play out. Um, okay, Austin, can White try to shoulder? Which point there? Yeah, actually, let, we can finish that line out because I actually I was thinking about this one a little bit more because I think even this wouldn't seem super easy during the game. Um, but I was thinking king d4, bishop e2, kind of force white to fix the pawn on a dark square. Then let's say king b5, king d5, g6, and the construction that black can kind of play for would be something like this. So if you get something that looks like this, that would be like game over. Um, f4, f5, yeah, could be another idea. Let's go back, like, here. And then I think black, maybe, maybe bishop g, would put the bishop on g4 with king d5. Sure, sure. So, like, f4, let's say bishop g4. Something like this. And, of course, just trying to prevent white from, from being able to trade everything off. Um, so still not like easy, but just an example of an endgame that this could kind of boil down to. And yeah, hopefully we can convert. Um, okay, so yeah, this was just one possibility. Like I mentioned, if white doesn't play h4 here, plays like king e3, king c3, I think the way black should kind of play this one is go g5. And if you kind of fix these pawns, you can slowly advance like f6, h5, h4. Um, of course, keeping the pawns on dark squares is probably the way to do it when we're playing for the win here. Um, and and then just slowly trying to maneuver in. Uh, so in the game, uh, knight f3 was played, bishop a6 check, king c3, white kind of keeps the king on the queen side. h6, so very slow move, kind of self-explanatory black just doesn't want to commit to anything just covers the g5 square and just slowly improves uh knight d4 
Um, and here black played g6, which I think is a reasonable move, but actually already at this moment, black could have kind of committed with king to e4. So this move is nice for black because now the king takes a lot of space and if white ever pushes f3, the king can immediately walk in. Um, but what's the drawback of this move? Can anyone quickly figure out what would be the issue here that black is allowing? Yeah, knight c6, exactly. And okay, in general, it's like these are the kind of moves that should scare us because white is winning the pawn and uh, creating counterplay. Uh, huge counterplay with the b-pawn. But it turns out this one is also good for black. So I found this line instructive as well because it's a line that I think I would have a hard time finding during the game. But let's say black goes bishop f1, hitting uh, the pawn. Now white can either push this one or just take on a7 right away. If white pushes, then king is coming in. Uh, black will take all these pawns and it'd be very hard for white to um, block off the, the bishop here. So essentially black is going to have very good chances with the kingside pawns running down and then just sacking the bishop for the b pawn um, whenever is uh, necessary. Actually, there was a nice game. I don't remember who played it. Maybe you guys can let me know in the chat, but there was a game where uh, black could have given up the bishop for the b pawn and instead played like bishop f5, trying to go bishop e4, and then white found this cold move king d4, and then the bishop wasn't able to actually stop the pawn. I don't know who played that one, but... That was well played, <laughs> so good job there. Um, so let's see, for example, this line, let's say white takes on a7. Um, bishop takes g2, b4. And uh, here I really like how black breaks through. So maybe you guys can think for a second here and try to find what would be black's fastest way of creating counterplay in this position. What's the fastest way to get things going here? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, h5 first, very good. And then g5. So that, that's very cool. That's an idea that we can easily just forget about. If g5 first, then maybe white can go h5 and our pass pawn is not quite as uh, quick here. But starting with h5, counterintuitive, but followed by uh, g5. And of course, this knight is never stopping this h pawn. So let's just say, for example, b5, black goes g5. If b6, then the king is getting out of the way. And as we can see, it's taking a lot of moves for white to block the diagonal, right? So it's going to take a lot of time for white to be able to do anything. And the way we would kind of play this one, let's say here, here, you know, once white is actually threatening, then of course, that's the moment that black needs to go bishop b7 and just say like, how are you going to get to me? And then it's very difficult for white. In the meantime, though, black is just running with the h pawn. So this one is actually winning for black. And I think this really cool line. Because uh, again, during the game, it's like really hard to go for these like uh, pawn races. Of course, it feels very risky, but that's kind of the power of the bishop is that whenever you do get into a pawn race, it, it's probably going to be favorable for you. So uh, definitely worth uh, worth risking that one. OK, so I thought that was kind of a instructive line, how black can just immediately come in. And now it's it's tough for white because uh, of course, bishop f1 here is going to be an idea to kind of force weakness, and the knight is not going to really be able to just stay on d4 forever. Eventually, black's king will be able to, to walk in. So this would already be very difficult for white. Um, let's see how the game played out. So g6. Um, oh, so Sanjana said, that's why I like keeping the king on e3. Right, so that's kind of like <laughs> pros and cons. If you keep the king on e3, you keep the king out of e4. Um, but then you allow black's king uh, potentially to be more active and um, putting pressure on the b3 pawn. Um, so knight d4, g6, knight c2 was played, king to e4, knight e3. Uh, okay, and how should black continue here, guys? What do you think? What would you play at this moment? Thank mm -hmm. you. 
yeah, F5, F4, exactly. Just, just creating counterplay and posing problems for white, just going after this knight, because there's no bishop F1, there's no way to get the king in, so this is kind of our only uh, main idea here. So F5, king D2, F4. Okay, your white played knight G4. Uh, I think this is actually going in the wrong direction, but it was already pretty tough endgame. H5. Uh, knight f6 check, king f5, knight d7, bishop c8, knight went back to f8, uh, and now just g5. And okay, the knight has kind of just played itself into, into the corner here, now the knight is actually caught, and black can even go and, uh, and pick it up. Um, here, so for example, if um, like takes, takes, check, here, 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 and the knight is stuck. So white is already just uh, pretty much lost, um, but I think the way the game played out is still kind of nice. So g3, takes, takes, king g4, knight g6, bishop f5, knight e7, bishop e6, b4, Black took this one, king d3, king g4, king e4, h4. Now, of course, h-pawn is really strong again, knight c6, bishop f5 check, king d5, f3, b5, h3, takes, push, and uh, of course, white's not in time. So black promoted and, and won the game. Um, okay, cool guys. Let me know if there's any remaining questions, if there are any lines that I, I didn't cover that you're still on uh, clear about. Um, but I hope, yeah, I hope you guys found that fun. Uh, sorry about the, the rating thing. It is weird that these arenas are rated. The normal wisdom would be to make, make it unrated, but yeah, hopefully we can fix that for you all. Uh, yeah, and yeah, if you guys like this, we can definitely do this uh, again. We actually did this with with Jesse the other day. I played out a different position with with I am David uh, Pruis while Jesse was like watching, and then we like analyzed it. So I would definitely encourage you guys to try this out sometimes, even playing with like thirty second increment to kind of get more used to like playing these end games out that are very very tricky, and then you don't have a lot of time, but you do have some time to think. So it's kind of a weird balance because with 30 seconds, like you can definitely uh, come up with ideas, but of course you have to be extremely, extremely vigilant with your time. Uh, well, cool guys. Yeah, if there are no questions, then we will wrap it up here. All right, guys. Yeah, absolutely. I will catch you all uh, next time.